Hello friends, Pastor Doug Batchelor here. We want to welcome you to our Friday evening Bible question of the week. And our question today is, is it okay for a Christian to drink a little bit of wine or alcohol for that matter? In a word, the answer would be no. And someone might say, well, aren't there some verses in the Bible that Jesus turned water into wine? We'll get to that in just a minute. First, look at the record that you find in scripture. Uh, Genesis chapter nine, verse 21, Noah, drank wine, obviously the fermented variety, became drunk and walked around naked in his tent and it caused a family scandal. Uh, Genesis 19.33, in order for Lot's daughters to entice their father to commit incest, they made him drink wine. Uh, David tried to get Uriah to drink wine so he could go against his conscience. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15, there the prophet says, Woe to him who gives his neighbor drink, pressing the bottle to his mouth to even make him drunk, that you may look on his nakedness. So often when a person drinks alcohol, their, their uh, reasoning abilities are impaired. It's basically a drug, a very addictive drug. And how many people have committed crimes and done embarrassing things um, and made decisions that alter their life while under the influence of alcohol? Since we're constantly battling against the devil, how often would a Christian want to surrender their reasoning capacity and their sensibilities to the devil? And the Bible tells us that the priests, remember when fire came down from heaven and devoured Nadab and Abihu, and right after that, God says, let it be a statute that if anyone comes in to serve before me in the sanctuary, they should not be drinking wine or strong drink. And we are now a nation of kings and priests. We should have our wits about us. God doesn't want us to surrender our reasoning to the enemy. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Isaiah 5, verse 11. Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may follow intoxicating drink, who continue until night, until wine inflames them. Now, there's a difference in the Bible between... Uh, alcoholic or fermented wine, and new wine, fresh grape juice. That's identified here in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 8. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, do not destroy it, for there's a blessing in it, so I will do for my servants' sake. Uh, new wine, you don't find the word grape juice anywhere in the Bible. They had fresh grape juice. They always called it wine. Anything that was from the fruit of the vine was called wine. Typically today we hear wine, we think, oh, it's alcoholic. But uh, that wasn't the case in Bible times. There was several different varieties of wine. You had the fresh grape juice at the harvest, as in the cluster. They called it wine. It's called new wine. You remember Jesus said, you do not put the new wine in old wineskins. That's unfermented grape juice. And then sometimes they would concentrate the grape juice. They would dehydrate it, and they'd almost make a, a syrup or a paste out of it because the less liquid, the easier it is to transport. It's a lot lighter than water is eight pounds a gallon. So they condense it just like we sell concentrated orange juice. You reconstitute it with water. They would do this with that strong grape juice syrup. Sometimes you'll find the word strong drink. It's not always talking about alcoholic. It meant the wine concentrate they would add water to. And, uh, but there's so many scriptures that say we should not drink the alcohol version. Read it in its context. Proverbs 23, verse 30. Solomon says, Those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine, do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At last it bites like a serpent, symbol of the devil. It stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things. Your heart will utter perverse things. You'll be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, doing silly suicidal things, or one who lies at the top of a mast, saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They beat me, and I did not feel it. When I awake, I will seek another drink. It's kind of describing the pathetic life of an alcoholic in that passage. The um, Bible says, actually, give strong drink to him that is perishing, and wine to those who are of a bitter heart. When Christ was on the cross, they offered him sour wine, and when you read about that, uh, you can see that Jesus, he would not drink. You go to Matthew chapter 27, verse 34. He's hanging on the cross. They gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. 
But when he tasted it, he realized that it would have a narcotic impact on his reasoning. He was not going to jeopardize the salvation of the world by losing his wits. He would not drink. The Bible says even in that time of great suffering, he would not take that to dull his pain. Now, what about the verses that say in John chapter 2, Jesus turned water into wine? Well, he did at the wedding feast. Uh, after the people had had plenty of their drink, it says they ran out of wine. Their feast used to last several days, and it was very embarrassing for the host. And Jesus' mother came to him and says, they run out of wine, and you know it's too late to buy any or secure some more. This is the wedding feast in Cana. And Jesus instructed them to still fill several jars with water. And he converted that water into wine. He uses the word wine. But he made fresh grape juice. They could only get that during the harvest. They say, you've saved the best to last. Where did you get this? Now, in our perverted culture, we think you save the good stuff to last. That means it's the high octane. It's alcoholic. They could get that all year long. That would last for years. You could only get the good stuff during the harvest. Jesus did not make... Um, many gallons of booze for a party. Uh, the Lord would not do that. And further proof of that is at the Last Supper, when Christ is talking about uh, the wine that represented his blood, he says in Matthew that um, I will not drink the fruit of the vine again, in Matthew 26, 28. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. Behold, I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, obviously grape juice, from now until the day I drink it with you new in my Father's kingdom. See, the unleavened bread was a symbol of Christ's perfect body. The unfermented grape juice a symbol of his pure blood. You know, it's interesting that the um, first miracle of Jesus is he took water and he turned it into beautiful grape juice and gave it to people at a wedding. The last thing Christ does is man gives him sour wine on the cross. Jesus took our sin, and he gave us his pure blood to cover our sins. We are washed in the blood. But no, a Christian should not drink alcohol. And if you don't believe the Bible, friends, use common sense. 50% of all of the people who die on the highway every day, alcohol is involved. More than 50% of the people who are in prison are there because of crimes committed from alcohol. More than 50% of the police calls for domestic violence, alcohol is involved. More than 50% of the people who are born with birth defects and, and mental challenges, uh, it's because alcohol impacted the pregnancies. When you look at all of the misery in our society and you realize that over half of it is connected with alcohol and what it does to our culture, why would a Christian want to support that? And some might say, well, we could drink a little bit of wine and we don't get drunk. Well, you might be able to, but one out of seven people that drinks becomes an alcoholic. The Bible says, I will do nothing that will make my brother stumble because of love for my brother. And so I don't believe a Christian should drink even a little wine, uh, even though they may be able to control it. Someone else might not be able to. Don't do anything that's going to make someone else stumble and perhaps lose their salvation. We have a special book we'd like to make available. It's called The Christian and Alcohol. It's got these verses and many more. We go into some of the Greek and Hebrew words of wine, and we will send you a free copy of this. All you have to do is click the link that's on your screen, and after you read it, we hope you share it with your friends. God bless you, friends, and we'll do another Bible question next week. Andrei Sakharov, the Russian nuclear scientist who is called the father of the hydrogen bomb, he later in life became a champion for human rights, eventually winning a Nobel Peace Prize. He once said, I've come to the conclusion that the most powerful weapon in the world is not the bomb, but it's the truth. Today's fake news and false doctrines steeped in tradition are all part of Satan's end time plan to deceive people in the greatest spiritual battle of the ages. But truth is the most powerful weapon to combat the lies of the enemy. And Jesus Christ is the greatest champion of truth. That's why I'm inviting you to be an Amazing Facts champion of truth, to bring the truth of God's word to people all over the world. Who are the champions of truth? There's some amazing friends of Amazing Facts who support the ministry on a regular basis with a reoccurring monthly donation. As a way of saying thank you for your partnership, 
we're providing you with spiritual resources that will help you grow in your walk with Christ and share God's truth with those around you. To join our Champions of Truth family, simply make a regular commitment and give a gift that changes lives all year long. The amount is up to you. It could be $10, $25, $50, even $100 a month. Whatever the amount, your consistent faithful giving will propel the life-changing truth of God's Word into the farthest reaches of the world. Together, we will make a difference, changing lives by helping people to know Christ. He is the greatest champion of truth that will set them free. Continue learning God's Word. We have two recommended videos for you. Click the one that interests you the most. You really don't want to miss our upcoming videos. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. Thank you for your support.